And now, our top story. Mattel Creations' latest crowdfund project did not meet its early bird goal, thus making it so anyone who was on the fence about the value of the project is now thinking to themselves, well, it's definitely not worth it now. I believe toy companies would do well to get rid of the early bird idea for their crowdfunds because they need to remember that the Hiss Tank was an anomaly that fed a fan base ravenous for new vehicles that weren't motorcycles, and in fact, I don't even think the next G.I. Joe classified crowdfund will do as well as the Hiss Tank. So yeah, my oh-so-humble opinion, the early bird, get rid of it. Ramen Toy has shown off its Ramen Racer, a clear answer to last year's failed HasLab, the Engine of Vengeance. Now, I'll be curious how this does, because I maintain that one of the reasons the Engine of Vengeance failed isn't necessarily price, though I'm sure that was a large factor. It's that I don't believe any iteration of Ghost Rider was going to carry a HasLab. So that's, that's why I'm curious about how the ramen racer is going to do. It looks phenomenal. Is it for me? Not really. Just because I don't necessarily care about that. And even though you can turn it into the Fast and the Furious car, I've never seen any of the Fast and the Furious movies. Does, uh, does that make me a bad nerd? In a stunning role reversal this past week, Hasbro decided they don't care about the environment after all. They issued a press release basically saying they heard everyone's complaints and would be returning to window boxes. Now make no mistake, the C-suite didn't hear anybody's complaints except their shareholders, Amazon, Target, GameStop, and Walmart when all of those companies said, guys, we're, uh, we're not selling your stuff, so you better do something. So Hasbro realized that the money they were saving on the packaging and the potential money they were getting kicked back to them from the government by using just cardboard packaging wasn't offsetting the money they were losing by the people who were no longer purchasing the product. So yeah, follow the money, people. But here's my question. Was it the plastic-free packaging or was it the increased prices with decreasing quality? This is where I'm really wondering. We know that by putting the window boxes in, there will be more impulse purchases and more people who are going to buy that are mint in box collectors. But what size is that market? Is it mostly about the packaging or was it more about the price increase? And if it was about the packaging and the price increase together, is Hasbro doing enough to bring people back, or is it too little, too late? Woo, many, many questions when it comes to this one. And yes, I know that Hasbro said our plastic is more environmentally friendly this time around, but no plastic is as environmentally friendly as cardboard. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get to the meat and potatoes of toy photography news. Well, hello there, everybody. I'm Photo Dave. This is Toy Picks, and you're watching Toy Photography News for Saturday, April 8th, 2023. But before we really get into that, please remember that I'll have product links for everything shown off in this video in the video description below. Many of those will be affiliate links, which means if you click on them and purchase something, you support the channel. Screw that. You support me, and I really appreciate it. Now, in toy photography news, what I do is I go over the past week's fully revealed action figures and I assign them photo scores based on seven criteria. The first is sculpt, the second is paint, the third is whether or not they come with an extra head or heads, the fourth is whether or not they come with extra hands, the fifth is if they come with extra accessories, the sixth is articulation, and the seventh is natural movement, meaning can they bend more than 90 degrees at the elbows, and do they leave any kind of unsightly waist swivel crunch thing that just messes with the sculpt? Doesn't make me happy. And now, with all that out of the way, that was a smooth transition, wasn't it? Let's get to toy photography news. 
Okay, we're going to start this thing with Super 7's G.I. Joe Ultimates and move all the way through to the Star Wars Black Series reveals from this past week, starting with the Baroness. Now, the Baroness looks very good. I can never fault Super 7 with the way things look. My fault with Super 7 is the way things move. And so, with that, let's get to the photo score. You can see Baroness gets a point for sculpt, a point for paint, a point for extra heads, a point for extra hands, a point for accessories. Nothing for articulation or natural movement, because that's just how Super 7 does things. So, Baroness gets a photo score of 5 out of 7. And now we have Super 7's G.I. Joe Ultimate's Gung Ho, who looks pretty good for a Sumbo representation, although there's something around the eyes that bugs me. I don't know what it is. Anyway, you can see that if we go to the photo score, he gets the same score as Baroness with a 5 out of 7. He got a point for sculpt, paint, heads, hands, accessories, but nothing for articulation or natural movement because, again, Super 7. I'm already feeling like this is broken record time as we look at Super 7's G.I. Joe Ultimate Stalker, who again, looks phenomenal for a cartoon version, but can't move worth crap. So, if we look at his photo score, he gets a point for sculpt, a point for paint, a point for extra heads, a point for extra hands, a point for accessories, nothing for articulation or natural movement, giving him a score of 5 out of 7. And finally, we have Zartan, another one that looks good for the cartoon, but uh, do I really have to give you the photo score for this one? It's 5 out of 7, for all the same reasons as it was for the past figures. SH Figure Arts announced five years later versions of Iron Man and Thanos from Avengers Endgame. Very cool. Not bad at all. I'm really liking the looks of these guys. They, well, look phenomenal. We've got things that are just, the sculpting is great, the colors are great, everything looks good. So, let's break them up and just check out Iron Man here, who doesn't get a point for sculpt, because again, these are just repaints. He does, however, get a point for paint, a point for extra heads, a point for extra hands, a point for accessories, a point for articulation, and a point for natural movement, giving this Iron Man a photo score of 6 out of 7. Now we check out Thanos, who is an absolutely beautiful figure. I think SH Figure Arts has easily the best Thanos on the market. And with all that, this is again a repaint, so let's just head to the photo score. Thanos doesn't get anything for sculpt, but he gets a point for everything else, because I'm going to assume there's an extra head here. If there's not, he should get a 5 out of 7, but I think there will be, giving him a 6 out of 7. And now, I did my weekly 5k toys hunt and found the Guardian of the Horde orc. And I'm just going to straight up say, this thing looks amazing. And it really helps with the photo shots. The photo shots? That they shoot. Wow, I'm... Yay redundancy. This thing just looks like one of those just huge monsters that you could throw in anything. It would totally be for me... If, again, I didn't have all those things coming up. But, yeah, it's a beautiful figure. Looks like it moves well. So, taking him to the photo score, I gave him a point for sculpt, a point for paint, a point for extra heads, a point for extra hands, a point for accessories, a point for articulation, and a point for natural movement. And, yes, he might be a repaint of the original orc, but I was looking at him both, and he looks different enough, and it's hard to tell enough where I did feel like it was justified to give him a point for sculpt. Anywho, this guy, 7 out of 7. And now we have Fog Toys A. At least that's what it looks like they're calling him. And this thing is ridiculous. This is one of those figures that I would get if I just had all the money. I love the bike. I love the look. I love checking out all the pictures and seeing that there looks like there's plenty of movement here. It's got a smirk and it's got a serious face. This is just one of those figures that makes me glad that people make figures. Just very cool. So, looking at this guy's photo score, I gave him a point for sculpt, a point for paint, a point for extra heads, a point for extra hands, a point for accessories, because if for no other reason, big bike a point for articulation, and a point for natural movement, giving A here a photo score of 7 out of 7. Also, let me know what A actually is, because, yeah, he's really cool. And now we're in Marvel Legends land with the Hulk and Banner 2-pack, and 
considering these are both basically just repaints of pre-existing stuff, let's just jump to Banner's photo score. He gets nothing for sculpt, he gets nothing for paint, because it looks like the only real paint going on is on the face. There are no extra heads, there are no extra hands, the glasses are an accessory. I didn't want to call them that, but they are an accessory. He does have articulation, but because of the waist cut, no natural movement, giving Banner a photo score of 2 out of 7. And now from that two-pack, we have this Grey Hulk, who doesn't look too bad, I'll give it to him. I know that they re-sculpted the chest area, but I just don't think it's enough to make him look different enough from the other Hulk releases to give him a point for sculpt. So if we go over to the photo score, he gets no point for sculpt. No point for paint, because it looks like the only paint's in his head. He does have extra head, he does have extra hands, he has an accessory. He's got articulation, but he doesn't have natural movement because waist cut. So, for the photo score, this Hulk gets a total score of 4 out of 7. Next, we have the Captain Marvel and Doctor Doom 2 pack, which we're just going to jump right into Captain Marvel because she's basically a repaint of stuff that's already going on. They did redo her arms, but again, I don't think that's enough to really give her a point for sculpt. So... If we look at the photo score for Captain Marvel, she gets nothing for sculpt, she gets nothing for paint, because honestly, the only paint works on her head and the symbol on her chest. She doesn't have extra head, she does have extra hands, there are no accessories, she does have articulation, but because there's absolutely nothing at the waist and she has the single jointed elbows, she has no natural movement, giving Captain Marvel here a photo score of 2 out of 7. And then there was Doom. And I believe there's enough new here to give him a point for sculpt, although it looks like his arms and legs were reused. The torso looks like there's quite a bit of new. So we're going to go over to Doom's photo score and not waste any more time. He gets a point for sculpt, but there's only paint on his head, so he doesn't get a point for paint. He does have an extra head, he has extra hands, and his mask counts as an accessory. So I gave him a point for that. He's got articulation, but again, waist cut, no natural movement. Doom gets a photo score of 5 out of 7. Now we're taking it over to the MCU's Wanda, who is pretty much just a straight-up repaint of the original version here. So let's just go to the photo score. She gets nothing for sculpt. She does look like she's got a little bit of a wash over her, so I am going to give her a point for paint. She has no extra head. She has no extra hands. She does have the dark hold and some power effects, so she does have accessories. She does have articulation, but again, because there's nothing at the waist, she's got nothing for natural movement, giving Wanda here a photo score of 3 out of 7. And now, taking it to Black Series, we have the Clone Commando, who's, I mean, got a cool head, but everything else is just a repaint. So, let's head to the photo score. He gets nothing for sculpt. He gets nothing for paint, because it looks like pretty much all the paint is on his visor. He gets no extra heads. He has no extra hands. He does have a blaster, giving him an accessory. He's got decent articulation, but because the diaphragm joint would break up the sculpt if used, he doesn't have natural movement, giving him a photo score of 2 out of 7. And then there was Echo, and I have to say, I am questioning the timing of these releases, just because if you saw the end of Season 2 of Bad Batch, you might recall Harrison Ford's quote that dead characters don't sell action figures. Anyway, let's just jump to the photo score, because Echo's a straight-up repaint. He gets nothing for sculpt. He does have a lot of paint, so I'm going to give that to him. He doesn't have extra head. He doesn't have extra hands. He does have extra accessories, so that's good. He's got articulation, but again, if you use that diaphragm joint, he's going to break up the sculpt, making it so there's no natural movement, giving Echo a photo score of, nat of 3 out of 7. Wow, words are hard. And now we have Hunter, who is a partial repaint, but has enough new on him where I think it's okay to give him a point for sculpt. So, again, let's just jump right to the photo score. He gets a point for sculpt. He gets a point for paint, because, man, there's a lot of paint. 
He doesn't have an extra head. He has no extra hands. He does have accessories. He does have articulation. And here, if you twist the diaphragm joint because of the design in the lower torso, it doesn't look like you break up the sculpt. So I'm going to give him a point for natural movement, giving Hunter a photo score of 5 out of 7. That takes us to Omega, who I have to say looks pretty darn good. I'm impressed with what the designers did with this one. She's looks like she's a totally new mold, so that's a good thing. She has an extra head, which is something you don't often see in Star Wars. I will say I prefer extra hands when it comes to expression, but I'm not going to complain about an extra head. So let's go over to Omega's photo score and see how she fares. This is an all-new sculpt, so she gets a point for that. She clearly gets a point for paint. She gets a point for extra heads. She doesn't have extra hands, but she does have accessories. She's got articulation, and I think she's going to be a small enough sculpt where we can give her a point for natural movement because it doesn't look like she's going to break up the sculpt when she actually bends in all the places. So Omega gets a photo score of 6 out of 7. And that takes us to Tech, who... Well, he's a straight-up repaint, but he does have goggles, so that's good anyway. And I do like the colors on these Bad Batch Season 2 figures. It, it makes them pop a little bit, whatever pop means. By the way, as a designer, you never like to hear a customer say, I don't know, I just want it to pop, because you prefer things that are a little more specific. Anyway, getting to Tech's photo score, he doesn't get anything for sculpt. There's plenty of paint, so he gets a point for that. There are no extra heads, no extra hands. He does have plenty of accessories. He's got decent articulation, but because, again, when you twist him at the diaphragm, that'll break up the sculpt. He gets no natural movement, giving Tech a photo score of 3 out of 7. And then there was Wrecker, who just looks cool, who's a character that I've really grown to dig when it comes to the Bad Batch. Now, this figure is mostly a repaint, but there's enough different where I wanted to give him a point for sculpt here. If you look at his chest and you look at all his torso, it seems to be fairly new. Even one of the pauldrons looks new, so I thought I'd give him a point for sculpt here. So, looking at his photo score, like I said, point for sculpt, point for paint. There are no extra heads, there are no extra hands. He does have accessories, he does have articulation, but again... When you use that diaphragm joint, he's going to break up the sculpt, giving him nothing for natural movement and a photo score of 4 out of 7. That takes us to the final figure on this week's Toy Photography News with Kersantan. And I have to say, I love what the designers did here. I think he looks like a great figure, and if he came with fists, he would be an easy buy. But he didn't, so I'll have to think about it. I have to say, I'm probably going to lean towards no just because he doesn't have fists. But still, designers did a great job on the look of this figure. Now, heading over to the photo score, he gets a point for sculpt. There is plenty of paint on this thing, so he gets a point for paint. There are no extra heads, no extra hands. He does have the blaster rifle, which seems redundant to me anyway. That gives him a point for accessories. He does get a point for articulation, because he's a big guy, so... Movement's probably going to be limited anyway, so when it comes to the natural movement, I did give him a point, giving him a photo score of 5 out of 7. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was this week's Toy Photography News, and whew, it was a short one. That, that, uh, that didn't suck on the recording time. Now, do me a favor and comment below and let me know what do you think about the figures I discussed here. Will you be picking any up? Are you passing a whole ton of them? These are the questions that plague mankind. As always, thanks again for watching. I appreciate it. It's huge for me that you're able to sit down and decide to spend some of your time watching toy picks. Mm. Thanks again, and until next time, have fun and happy snapping. See ya. <laughs>